All right, 2.8 is dealing with both a quadratic and a linear uh, equation. So we're going to graph both of them on the same graph, but we're going to use our calculator to help us. So that's why you have a graphing calculator in front of you. Okay, so I would like for you to please, first, before we do anything with our calculator, I would like for you to, with me, write down on the side of your paper the steps to be able to put this into your calculator, okay? Because if we think about a parabola, we have a U-shape and then we have a line. So they're either going to intersect, let's write this at the top of our paper, up above where it says solve the following systems. Okay, so we're going to have three types of solutions. We're going to have one where we have a parabola, and a line where it touches, how many times do those two touch? Yeah. Two. So this is going to be two solutions. You might have one where you have a parabola and a line that touches one time. So this would be one solution. And then you might have a graph where you have a parabola and a line going like this, which is zero solutions or no solutions. What's going on? My phone keeps going off. Okay, so we might have a system where we have a parabola and a line and they don't touch. So this would be a no solution or zero solutions. Typically, we're going to deal with the one with two solutions. Okay, that's the one we're going to deal with most where they cross at two different points. And I'm going to show you a couple problems where this is actually going to be useful for the real world. Right, like when would you ever do this, okay? So, the first thing we're gonna do is use our calculators, and so if you're not comfortable with a graphing calculator, or even if you are, I want you to please with me just write these steps out. Step number one, and you're gonna write small because we have five or six steps to get through. So step number one is to plot both graphs in the calculator. And you're going to do that by using the y equals button on your calculator. And I'll show you where all this is in just a minute. We're just going to take notes first. Okay, step number two is to push the graph button. Now, when I pull up my calculator, this type is going to be gone. So make sure you have that. Pull up your graphing calculator. Okay. Your Y equals button is here in the top corner, top left corner. Okay. You guys see the Y equals? It's a gray button at the top. Okay, so you can kind of see where my mouse is hitting, right? So we have y1, y2. This is where we're going to insert our equation. So your x is over here. See where my mouse is? That's your x key. It says x, t, theta, and n. Theta is that circle with a line through it. So our first equation is x squared. There's a squared key down here. Look where my mouse is. The squared key is down there. X squared, you need to do the subtraction sign minus X next to the green button. The X is next to the green button. So X squared minus X, not negative, but subtract X minus 12. Okay, so you have the first one there. Now, <clears throat> If you need help, you can also talk with your neighbor too. Some of you are going to, like, technology is your thing. This down arrow that's gray, I push it down and I go down, I, and my cursor goes down to the next line. You guys see that? Now we're going to type in our next equation of our problem is x plus 3. So let's take x plus 3. 
Okay, so I went back and I did x plus 3. I got my x from that green button, or the button beside the green button. Raise your hand if you were to this point on your calculator. If you need, who needs a little bit of help? It's okay to say yes. Okay, uh, Anthony, can you help Darius real quick? Patrick, you got it or you need help? Yeah, okay. Josh, you got it? You need help? I got it. Okay. Okay. It says step number two is to push graph. Do you guys see where the graph button is? Yep. It's that gray button over here. So you're going to hit graph. If it said error, then you put something in incorrectly. Go back to your y equals. Make sure it says x squared minus x minus 12. Did you use the negative sign? Or use the subtraction sign? Okay, check with your buddy. Anybody else get error when they did it? I didn't get error, but mine's not showing what you got. So if you're having trouble with your Zoom window, looking at what your graph looks like, we're going to hit Zoom, number six. And your graph should look like this. Is that what yours looks like now? Yep, yes. Everyone match mine? Yep. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is I need to find the two places where my graph is intersecting. Okay, so do you see that your graphs are intersecting at two different spots? You guys see that? Okay. Do not get frustrated with this process that I'm getting ready to explain because this is new for every single one in this classroom. Some of you are going to be able to get this right away, and if you get it, please help the people beside you. Okay? Yep. No. Um, I'll take it, and then I'll help. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate where these are intersecting. So on your calculator, do you guys see the word calc above trace? So trace, I can't, oh my God, I can do both of these. Let's see. See how calc is, oh. See how calc is right here? You guys see that? But do you see how it's blue? That means we have to hit the blue key first to activate the blue operation. So we're going to hit second calc, and then it takes you to this screen. Everyone to this screen, second calc. Okay, we want to check the intersection. So we're going to, you can either arrow down to number five or you can just hit five. If you just hit the five key, it'll take you back to your graph. Don't please go step with me at a time. And now you have this Y at the top. It has the equation at the top. It has first curve at the bottom. Everyone there? Yep. Okay. Let me explain this process to you before you hit anything on your keyboard. Some of you may see a dot flashing on yours. Some of you may not. Okay, but I'll show you how to get to the dot in just a minute. I want you to watch up here. Your job is to pick a point here on this line and here on this curve to guess what this point is. Okay, so what your calculator is going to do, look up here at mine, your calculator is going to give you a pointer or a dot that's flashing, and your job is to get it as close to this point of intersection as you can. Now, you can also choose a point over here or a point down here. It doesn't matter, really. And it doesn't matter how close you get, right? Like you might pick this point here, this red point, but your neighbor might pick the blue point. You're still going to get the same answer, okay? So first curve just means the first graph. Which, which graph is it on first, okay? Then second curve is going to mean which graph is it on second. And it doesn't matter which one you do first or which one you do second. Our goal is to guess a point that's close to that intersection, okay? So... My first curve, pay attention, it says that my y value is on negative 12. Do you guys see that? Can you see that on mine? It says y is negative 12. Mm -hmm. That means right now my cursor is blinking all the way down at negative 12. So it's below my screen. I can't see it. So to move it, I'm going to use my up arrow. And do you see how my, it's changing? But it's only changing between two things. So now I'm going to try my left arrow. And it's coming up. There it is. Do you guys see it on my screen? Okay. So now I want you to find your dot, your blinky dot, on your graph. Look at the coordinates of where it currently is and move it left or right to get into your screen view. 
So once we get close to this point, we're going to hit enter. And you'll notice that when you hit enter, the blinky dot hops automatically to the other graph. Okay, and then I'm going to get kind of close and hit enter. Now, do you see on my graph, do you see that I have an X here and an X here? On my graph, I have two little X's. You should have two X's on yours, okay? Or your blinky dot might be covering one of the X's. And then down here in the bottom, it says guess. You guys see that? So now if it says guess, that means you have checked a spot on the first curve. You've checked a spot on the second curve. So now you're going to guess. It's actually calculating. It's not guessing where they intersect. So the next step is to push enter. And it says the intersection now is at negative three, zero. Okay, so let's go through. If you didn't get that, let's go through the steps again. All right, I'll do it with you. Second, calc. Everyone start over, unless you got negative three, zero. I want you to start over. Second calc, number five, intersect. First curve, somewhere close to that point of intersection. Hit enter. Now, somewhere close to that point of intersection, hit enter. That's second curve. Now hit guess. Is it hit yet? Yep, or hit, I'm sorry, hit enter, which gives you guess. And it says intersection negative three, zero. That's gross. <laughs> Who's your All right, so we have negative three, zero is one of our first points. So we're going to put negative 3, comma, 0. That's one of our first points. All right, so we left off on step number 3. So step number 3 over here is we're going to hit second, calc, which is also the trace key. Option number 5 which said intersect. So step number three is to do second calc slash trace. We selected option five to intersect. Step number four is to pick a point on the first curve. And then we hit enter. Then we do the second curve, hit enter. Then it's going to ask us if we guess, we'll hit enter again. <clears throat> Step number five. is to repeat steps three through five for the other intersection point. All right, so now, once you have this written down, go back to your second calc, and we're gonna go up and get that other point up there. So you're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna do second calc and get the other point. So second calc intersect, first curve, second curve. So now you're gonna have to move your blinky dot around. No, we're still on problem number one because there are two points where they are intersecting, right? There's the low one and then there's a high one. Yep, where the line and the parabola intersect on the second one. So I'll pull up my calculator.
You guys see the other point where they're crossing? Way up at the top? Okay, so I'm going to go to second, calc, intersect. Okay, perfect. Okay, so first curve, somewhat close to it. Second curve, I'm going to back it away a little bit. Some of you had a little bit of trouble because you were too close. Enter. And then we're going to guess. You should be getting 5-8. Are you getting 5-8? Raise your hand if you got 5-8 on your calculator. If you did not get it, talk to someone beside you, please, and ask for help. Did you get it, Patrick, or no? Okay, I want you to follow on your calculator, too. So now do it on your calculator. Second. Okay, go to second calc. Intersect. So remember, you go to second calc. We put our new y equals in. You go to second calc. Our five, our intersect. First curve, second curve, guess. And we said that 1.9 is close to 2.0, and negative 6.0 is close to negative 6. So I'm going to write that my solution is 2 comma negative 6. So when you graph this, Oh my goodness. When you graph this, go ahead and put 2, negative 6 on there. And this one's at the bottom, so let me. You might want to move your y axis, or I'm sorry, your x axis up a little bit so you can get all the way down there. This is the line. This is what my parabola will look like. So the only solution is 2, negative 6. Questions about that? Darius? This is not on AccuPlacer. No. Factoring is on AccuPlacer. That's why we practice. Okay, let's do example three. Is this on the math ECA? Uh, not this exact problem, but you can use a graphing calculator on the ECA, yes. Okay, so what if I asked you to solve this uh, system algebraically, which means without a calculator? So you can set your calculator to the side for a minute. If I know that both of these equations equal y, okay, both of these equations equal y, would you agree, what did you just say? The substitution elimination process. Substitution. Okay, if you don't know what we're talking about, then let's look at this. Would you agree that 2 plus 3 is 5? We can all agree with that, right? And 4 plus 1 is 5, right? They equal the same thing. So if they equal the same thing, would you agree I can set up 2 plus 3 equals 4 plus 1? Doesn't 2 plus 3 equal 4 plus 1? Because they equal the same thing. Same concept down here. If they both equal y, what do we know about these two things? They're equal to each other. I can set them equal to each other. Okay, if they both equal y. So the first thing that I'm going to do is x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals x plus 3. If you're a steps person, step number one is to set <coughs> equal to each other. Okay, I just set them equal to each other. 
What are your thoughts about how we should proceed from here? Okay. Okay, both of you are talking about the same thing. I heard add 5, I heard subtract 3. What are we doing? We're setting it equal to what? Zero. zero. Remember, whenever there is a quadratic term, we're going to set it equal to zero. So now we set equal to zero. That's step number two. So I know that I'm going to have to subtract x, subtract 3. Now this looks very familiar, or it should look very familiar. What do we do with these things? Good. X factor this. All right, what two numbers multiply to get negative 8 and add to get 2? I hear 4 and 2. Which one needs to be negative? Negative 2, right? Remember, because there is a 1 out front, I can take the shortcut and just set up x plus 4, x minus 2. What do we do with each of these things? Good, and I solve for them, right? So step number 3, solve for x. Okay, but think about what we're doing. We are solving the point, solving for the points of where a parabola is intersecting a line. And each of these points is an xy pair, right? <coughs> and this is an xy pair. But right now, all I have over here are just my two x's. So why don't I plug them back in? Mm-hmm. Good idea, Darius. Okay, so we're going to plug each x in to find the y value that goes with that x. So we're going to do it one at a time. Step number four is to plug each x in to find, and I'm going to write this word corresponding. That means to find the y that goes with that particular x. Now, which equation do you think it's going to be easier to plug in for? X plus, three. X plus 3, right? So if I have y equals x plus 3, and I'm going to plug in my first x value, which is negative 4. What's negative 4 plus 3? Negative 1. So y is negative 1 when x was negative 4. So I have the point negative 4 comma negative 1. That's going to be my first point. So I took x equals negative 4. I plugged it in. I found out the y value that goes with it. I'm going to do the same thing with the other x. I'm going to use, again, the bottom equation because that's easier. <coughs> the second x value is, what is it? 2. 2 plus 3 is? So 5 happens when, uh, I'm sorry, y is 5 when x was 2. So those are my two equations. I'm sorry, my two points, not equations. We would have gotten the same answer if we had done this by graphing. Okay? I would like you to try number 4, please, using these steps. I'm going to be quiet and let you work. If you need help, I'll be writing it on the board, but I want you to try to do it on your own. We have the four steps laid out for us.
We're getting x to be negative 4. Now, technically I have two negative 4s, but I'm going to get the exact same answer, right? If I plug in both negative 4s, I'm going to get a positive 2 each time. That means that this only has how many solutions? One solution, which means the graph is only touching one time. Okay? Question about that? Okay, we're going to pause here. We're going to finish these notes tomorrow because I want you to have a chance to get started on this, okay? Does anyone have any last questions?